everyone and welcome to KDH Art Class. Today we're going to focus on warm and cool colors. So we've already covered the color wheel and even with just regular old crayons we started with a red crayon, a blue crayon, and a yellow crayon and we did this nice little circle that we divided into six sections and we combined those crayons where we colored it red and put the yellow on top to create the secondary colors. Okay. Now that we know how to mix colors, I even have a video on you get, uh, doing it with paints or, um, or even temper paints. So watercolor paints, temper paints, and crayons. You can even do it with colored pencils. So we created this lovely color wheel. And now we're going to start using the color wheel like an artist. So we're going to divide our color wheel in half. And we're going to notice that on this half of the color wheel are all the reds, oranges, and yellows. They are called your warm colors, uh, your hot colors, even your fire colors. I, I tell my students they're the fire colors. They're the colors you would use uh, when you're creating a campfire or you're coloring the sun in the sky or a sunset anything that's considered hot Would be a warm or a fire color. These are very bright energetic happy colors okay. On the other side We have the cool colors okay. Whether you're thinking of water the grass between your toes or even a purple popsicle, you know like grape juice or something like that. These are your cool colors. They're a lot calmer. They're more distant. Okay? They're, they tend to have that cool, comforting feel about it. Okay? So our project is we're going to do uh, our subject. In this case, it's going to be an owl in all the fire colors. And then around it in our background we're going to do the cool colors now I did cheat and I did one of my neutral colors the brown brown is neutral and white white is neutral they are not a fire color they're not a cool color okay uh, brown is when you mix a, a fire color with a cool color type thing when you mix the colors together you'll get a brown otherwise white is considered all colors in the science world and black is considered no color in the science world and since we can't create white being light all colors we create a white uh, since we cannot create black turn out all the light color we created a black and then of course like I said brown is where you mix all the colors together you create a brown muddy color Alright, so now that we touched on warm colors, cool colors, warm colors, cool colors, and a little bit on our neutrals, black, white, and brown, and gray. Now let's begin our lesson. So this is going to be kind of following along, and then you're going to color it any way that you want as long as you are doing it focused on the warm and cool colors. So that is why it's a little bit more of an intermediate project. I did some beginner ones too that are a little bit easier. So you're going to need something to draw with. Of course a piece of paper and something to color with. And I think I'm going to start off with some crayons and then I might even for my background cool colors bring in the watercolor paints just for something different. But as you can see, you can simply do crayons in the background. That's what I did on this one. All right, let's zoom in just a little bit, make it easier for you to see. I'm going to now switch from pencil to marker. Ooh. And because I'm thinking about watercolor markers, I better get a permanent marker. Otherwise, my water-based marker when I put water on it is going to mix into my drawing and I don't want that. If you're using pencil you have nothing to worry about. 
All right, so when I do my owls, I like to start in the middle and work my way out. So I'm going to start a little bit more than halfway up. I want my owl to be nice and big, nice little center. Do a small little line. And do the letter V to create the beak, the center. Okay. From there, you could um, find yourself something to trace around, or you can just simply draw two circles. And I think I'm just going to draw my two circles. So I'm going to start with tiny little circles, itty bitty. Because again, I'm going to start in the middle and work my way out. And I'm not going to color them. And then I'm going to make a little bit bigger circle. And I'm going to use my neutral black. You could use your pencil. Or you could use a crayon. Your choice. So now we have like the little highlight. And then I'm going to go around it. As best I can to make it as equal as possible. Right. And then from there, I like to just do more and more circles around. So I'm focusing on how far away my marker is from the other circle and I'm just going to try and keep it the same all the way around. So if I'm going to be this far away from my circle, I'm going to try and make sure I'm that far away all the way around. Got a little big on that side. I kind of like it. it. Makes him look like he's turned his head a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and add some lines in between you can add as many or as few as you would like depending on how you want to do it of course I'm changing it up all the time I just don't like being very predictable what can I say Alright, so that's pretty good. So now I'm going to go from my beak all the way around. And go all the way around. And back to my beak. And there we have the eyes of the owl. And I like to give my owl some nice little eyebrows. So you can make them as thick or as thin as you like. And out it goes and bring it back. And now for his head, I'm going to go over. Add those little feathers sticking out that look like ears, but it's not its ears. I forgot what they're for, but it's not its ears. And I didn't make that one big enough, so I added an extra line. I'll use it in my art. And then I'm going to come down where the neck would be and do my little feathers and by now if you've been following my videos you know zigzag line across and from there we add the body it's going to curve out to give them kind of a short squatty body. I'm running out of room here. And 
And I think I'm going to go ahead and create a curved line for the wing. And another curved line for the wing. Let his legs kind of come down. One, two, three. One, two, three. Little zigzaggies. And then bring the legs up and over. We're going to add is some toes. So I'm going to do what looks like a rainbow shape. Then a kind of a curved line. Followed by a V. And then I'm going to repeat it. A rainbow shape. Curved line and a V. And then one more rainbow shape. Curved line and a V. And there's his toes. So fun. And connect it to the leg. Then I'm going to repeat that. We're going to start with that middle toe being curved. Small little curved line and a V. Repeat it on this side. Rainbow, curved, V. Rainbow, curved, and a V. And last but not least, connect it to the toes. Now his tail is going to be out since he's on a branch. You're going to need to figure out where your branch is coming from his foot. Connecting to the other foot and going off the page. And how thick the branch is. And I'm going to make sure it's thick enough to hold my owl. And his tail feathers are going to be sticking out. I can shorten them or make them longer. So this one, it's longer. It's going behind. This one, I think I'm going to make it shorter. And I'm going to go across. the other side. I flared that one out so I can flare this one out a little bit. And then make my little lines for the tail feathers in between. And there's his tail feathers. Alright. I personally like to show some little feathers here but you do not have to. And then I also We'll do some sort of feathery U-shapes for his chest. Give him some texture for his legs. And these are those bumpy lines that we practiced. Bumpy, bumpy, bumpy. They look like the letter U in this case. Going across. And I tend to try and connect them to the middle of the bumpy above it. I love these bumpy lines. I use them for my dragons, my snakes, my fish, anything with scales, lizards, and the, uh, the feet of my turtles. So many things you can use this lovely bumpy texture for. And 
and then you just keep going down as low as you like. So I started to not start from the edge and come in a little bit more. And I got to like this belly area. And then I just kind of let it from there be the lines for the legs. Kind of indicating some feathers. Going down to his feet. So it's not all the same old, same old. And sometimes I'll even add some longer feathers here on the shoulders, but I digress. All right, from there, you are now going to consider doing any additional background. In this case, I did the moon, but you can do a star. You can even do them in the sunshine, although they're usually a night nocturnal, nocturnal animal, like bats. They like their evening time. You can overlap it. I think I might do some stars, just to make it a little different. So you can even add your little branches with some leaves in it. Anything like that. And my stars, I don't like them to be too perfect. It's more fun to make them go all over the place. So it doesn't have to have the five, it can be six or seven little thingies. Anything that's going to, again, make your background a little bit more interesting. All right, so now we're up to the coloring part. And what I did on my owl is I did all the warm colors. Now keep in mind, warm colors, when you're looking at your pack of crayons, are any of the reds, the oranges, and the yellows that you have in your pack. Now here's kind of the fun part. Pink is red mixed with white. Because white is a neutral, it ends up remaining a fire color. So when I add white to red or I add white to orange, they're still fire colors. Even though it's peach and pink, you can still use it with your fire colors. If I was to add black to any of these and get a really dark uh, maroon color or even a mahogany color when you add the uh, black to the orange, get that really dark, dark Color. Those would also be warm colors because you added it to a fire color, it still remains a fire color. So I have all these fun colors that I can use to color my owl. So let's get started. And you can use any colors that you want. You can mix them up. And for each of my little sections here, I like to leave a spot. <laughs> that would be a hungry puppy dog that you hear in the background. Who's not happy about being stuck upstairs. And she wants downstairs for her food. She's distracting me trying and then she's going to get the other two barking too. Yes, I have three doggies. Mm -hmm. All right, so I like mixing it up. Maybe I'll just add the other fire color yellow to it and you're just coloring on your own. Well, now that I have the yellow out, how fun would it be to let me do some yellow around the eyes. Mm -hmm. Maybe 
maybe some yellow wings. And I'm going to press really hard in case I decide to use my watercolors, which I think I am for my background. Again, you do not have to. No, there she goes. She is hungry. <laughs> and she's just going to have to wait till this recording is done. Because I don't want to start my drawing over again. I think I'll even do my tail feathers with this yellow. <laughs> I'll just have to ignore her. Or laugh every time she does it. Just thinking. Yes, she's used to telling us what to do. And like we did with our color wheel, I like mixing colors together. So I did the bright yellow and now I'm doing a light orange. And you may be, you probably can't see it very well on the screen, but it's okay. I can see it here and it gives it just a little bit of depth and interest. If I wanted to, I could maybe even go with a, a darker one right here where the feathers are and you can see that a little better <laughs> tell you she is not going to give up she's going to just keep barking during my video let's try closing the door see if we can tune her out a little bit make it a little interesting. Add little bits of orange here and there. Oh, I have hot pink. I think I might do the head with this kind of a fuchsia hot pink. Oh, I think that'll look really good when I mix it with the, maybe a red orange. Something that's going to brighten it up and make it pop. Again, you're just coloring using any of the fire colors. You try to add a little variety so it's easy to change colors and not do the same thing. Don't you color it one color. Mm -mm -mm. We are not doing a monochromatic right now. You have at least at least three colors that you can be using red orange and yellow so no coloring scribble scrabble all over it this is not a contest to quickly get it done make sure you change colors when you get to a new section of the bird my head is pink my wings are yellow my eyebrows are orange with a little bit of yellow in it. My beak is orange with a little bit of yellow in it. And like I said, get a nice fiery red to mix with my pink. And right here in the middle. Maybe on the underside. Oh, didn't mean to get out of my line there. That's what I get for rushing. I'm trying to go too fast. Only because I don't want this video to last, you know, the full three, four hours that I would like to take doing my artwork. Trying to keep it in a reasonable amount of time. And this bright red in here. And you see I changed colors again. Went from the pink head to red around the eyes. Might bring in some of that orange. I can't go yellow, the inside of my eyes are yellow. Fun, bright orange color. Almost looks the same as that yellow. Probably could have chose better. 
But we know what that means. It means I now have to mix and blend my colors. So here we go. Let's darken it up. So if you don't like it, even with crayons, you can go on top and fix it. There we go. Now they're standing out a little bit better. Be fun. Do a neat little pattern down here. over here. And I think I'll do some yellow little claws. <laughs> My dog is definitely persistent. Alright. So now, what colors haven't I used? I haven't used the peach color be a nice one maybe for this first row. Maybe I can do it ombre. Let's start making the light pink. Next. Let's see, maybe the darker pink. After that. going way too fast. I am not staying in my lines very well at all. Please take your time. The good news is since I know I'm going darker and darker as I'm going down, if I do accidentally get into the other area, it's not the end of the world. But now that I'm switching and going a little bit lighter, I'm going to need to be a little bit more careful. <laughs> uh oh, there goes my other puppy dog. Yes, you're not hearing strange noises, you're just hearing her making her noises. I'm trying to go as fast as I can, guys. But it's art. You can't mess it up. It wouldn't look right. Yeah. Yes, I talk to my dogs. Sometimes they listen. Sometimes they don't. <laughs> they run my world. Mm -hmm. And you can still hear the other one going. back down to the orange. <laughs> right. I'm almost done. And I'm going along. Usually at this point I would let you just do it on your own. I wanted to show you something kind of cool if you do crayons and if you are blessed with having some watercolor paints. Alright, so let's say I'm done with my little bird now. I think I'm going to grab my white to do my stars. colors for the background. 
So again, you can do it with crayon, color pencil, markers, whatever you have, or if you have some watercolor paints, and the last thing is my branch. Take my neutral color brown. Carefully go between the toes. And now I'm ready for my pinks. Get these things out of the way. Must have a clean area here. Alright. So what's neat is we used all of our fire colors for a bird. And we used crayon. The reason I used crayon is because I'm going to use these watercolor paint and start painting the background. I so didn't let my colors soak very well or very long. Oh my goodness, my dogs are going to drive me crazy here. I just know it. Alright, so there we go. Now we're starting to rock and roll. Now, what I wanted to show you that's kind of cool and magical is even if you go on top of these colors, remember we're using the cool colors for the background. So, I'm going with the blue, the green, and the purple. And some of you already noticed that she's going on top of her bird, but it's not sticking because of the crayon and I colored nice and dark and you'll even notice that about my stars that I put white crayon on oh goodness now the other one's going <laughs> well anyways obviously it is time for me to go have fun coloring your warm and cool colored towels and if you happen to have some paint feel free to do the wax resist of crayon with the watercolor paint on top of it. I think you'll really like how it turns out Have fun, enjoy painting, and I hope to create some more artwork work with you soon. Bye!